Hi everybody, Claudia here with Healthy Preparedness. In this video, I wanna share with you about one of the remedies that I think everybody should keep in their home um, for in their food storage, but also just on a possible day-to-day -day basis, just as a first aid remedy. Um, and that remedy is bentonite clay. This is my bentonite clay right here. It's Redmond clay. This is a six pound bucket. Um, it's just a light powder and just um, you can do so many different things with it. This bucket right here usually costs around $50. Um, I get it from the health food store, from Real Foods, or Good Earth, or from Alpine Food Storage. If you don't live in Utah, you can go to the Redmond Clay website. I think it's redmondclay.com and look to see where they sell their products so that you can find some there. Um, but there is a less expensive resource that I'm gonna share with you in this video a little bit later on. So uh, first I just wanna start with the most pure form of this bentonite clay and tell you a little bit about how you can go about using it. So one of the best ways to use it is by creating what's called a bentonite clay gel. And the way you do that is you mix two parts water with one part bentonite clay. Um, so I keep it in this plastic container just for emergency purposes. We keep one in our car, we keep one in our home, um, and it just creates this clay, this gel-like substance that you can use and apply to wounds, bites, stings, burns. Um, in fact, my son the other day, he burned his two of his fingers using a hot glue gun and I guess he didn't take the hot glue off when it burned him, he just left it on there. I don't know if some of you have ever done that before and it is a pretty painful burn. And so after we ran it under cold water to reduce the heat within the burn or to eliminate it completely really, um, we then applied a thick layer of the bentonite clay to each finger and then we wrapped it up with saran wrap and then it was about 15 minutes later, he went to bed and he was able to sleep and he slept just fine. So bentonite clay has the ability to reduce pain by up to 80% in many, if not most instances. It's kind of really amazing stuff. Um, bentonite clay has both adsorptive and absorptive properties, meaning that it really has an amazing ability to draw out toxins or poisons now that doesn't really apply to burns. Um, I'll talk about the burns a little bit more in just a second, but the adsorptive and absorptive properties, when you apply it to something like a sting or um, an infected wound, it has the ability to soak out or to pull out, to draw out the infection, which, or the poison from like a sting or a bite of some kind. It's really amazing stuff, but not only does it draw out those poisons or toxins, so to speak, but it also um, has the ability to increase voltage in that area. And when you increase the voltage in that area, it allows healing to happen more quickly, which is why it's so great for burns. So here's something to remember though. When you apply a paste to a wound or a burn or a bite, a sting, so on and so forth, there are two different ways you wanna cover it. If you are needing and wanting the clay to pull out the um, poison or infection, you actually want to cover it with a fabric layer, so that with a breathable layer, so that the clay does somewhat dry out, so that suctioning or pulling um, action is enhanced. Um, I mean, the clay in and of itself will draw that into itself, but as it dries a bit, it helps increase that drawing ability. If you're applying the paste to a wound or a burn, now this is really important, you want to cover it with something like saran wrap, something that's not breathable, because the last thing you want to have happen is to have bentonite clay dry on a wound or a burn, because it would be incredibly painful to try to get that off, even after soaking it, and it could and would possibly do more damage. So those are some good things to remember. Um, one way that we like to use our bentonite clay powder is by drinking it. We create what's called liquid bentonite clay. And the way to do that is to mix one fourth of a cup of bentonite clay powder in a pitcher of water. Now I have a half of a pitcher of water, so I am just going to add an eighth of a cup of the powder to my pitcher of water. 
and mix it up. This is kind of a fun little pitcher that I got from Savers and it just mixes things up really nicely in there. So you just want to mix it up and if you don't have a pitcher like this by all means you can use a spoon or a whisk or something like that. Mix it up a bit and then just let it sit for a little bit. Allow the clay to soak up that water and then you'll come back and mix it again in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And you'll notice um, after you've mixed it in there nice and thoroughly, you'll notice that the clay will sink to the bottom. So it'll be down here and up here will be more of a clear water. And really it's only the clear water on top that you need to be drinking in order to get the benefits from this, this clay liquid. Um, I personally like to pump this a few times and get some of the clay to mix up into it just a little bit. I like to get some of the hardier pay, uh, clay particles in there um, just because I feel like I want it to be nice and effective. But um, in my opinion, and I've said this in some of my classes, but I think drinking bentonite clay on a daily basis is one of the easiest and most powerful things we can do for our health in today's time because we are constantly being exposed to toxins. Most of us um, are just have a hard time detoxifying, getting rid of all these, whether they be pathogens or heavy metals, pollutants, so on and so forth, chemicals. Um, and this really just helps with that, just drinking one to two glasses of this clear liquid on top. And really, it almost has a bit of a sweet flavor. It doesn't taste very bad at all. It's actually, I enjoy it. So... And my kids like it. My oldest daughter, she actually craves it, which tells me that she's needing it. Um, there are trace minerals in here that our body does get some of. And there's, um, there's a mineral called silica, which most of us are deficient in, that's really good for us as well. Um, in fact, let me tell you a little something right now. We also use this for making toothpaste, and that sounds really gross. And some of you are familiar with it, some of you aren't. I have the toothpaste recipe on my blog. Um, on the header of my blog, there, there's a tab up there that says extra articles and additions. If you click on that, you'll get, you'll um, be able to see where the link to the toothpaste remedy is at. And we love it. Let me tell you two small stories with it. So my son, he had this weird tooth issue where he had black that was showing up along his teeth. And I would tell him to go brush his teeth and he said, and he'd come back down and the black was still all along his teeth. And it was more like a dark brown. And, um, and I said, you, did you even brush your teeth? And he said, I brushed them four times. It was just this weird issue that he has been going on for a year, a year and a half, and it's just been getting progressively worse. Well, once we started using the bentonite clay toothpaste, it was gone within, I think, a week, a week and a half. Suddenly I noticed, oh my gosh, you don't even have that problem anymore. And he hadn't even been using just the bentonite clay toothpaste. He'd been using half bentonite, tooth, half bentonite clay toothpaste and half regular toothpaste, but it still did the job. Another story is my mom had a chronic uh, tooth, um, toothache that the dentist just couldn't figure out. And she had seen several, she had seen a couple different really good dentists and they'd done x-rays, they'd gone in the tooth, they'd seen if there was something in there, they couldn't find anything. They put a layer of, um, like a protective layer over it and th she said that helped her for a little bit but then he went right back to just causing her pain on a continual basis. Well. She started using the bentonite clay toothpaste and it just went away. She, and, and it went away within a week. It was really fast. So um, I got this toothpaste recipe from a friend of mine. Rebecca, thank you for sharing that recipe with me. And um, uh, her, I think it was her sister-in-law. Sorry if I'm not getting the story right. But I think it was her sister-in-law that had used this recipe for her son who had cavities and they couldn't get to the dentist just because of financial reasons. They needed to wait a little bit longer. They, um, and his teeth were hurting him and they used the bentonite clay toothpaste. And um, once they were able to get to the dentist, I think it was like a few weeks later, they went to the dentist and he didn't have any cavities. So to me, that's really important. That says something, especially in a disaster situation where we want to be avoiding cavities as much as possible. So those are the three main ways that we love to use our bentonite clay. Now, if you do not want to create a whole pitcher of the bentonite clay liquid, um, just try a cup first. You just need one teaspoon in a glass of water and stir it up. Wait just 10, 20 minutes, stir it up again. Allow that to sink down to the bottom and then drink about three fourths of it, even a little bit more of it. The only side effect that people, um, a negative side effect that people get from drinking the clay, if they drink all of it, like all, all of the clay down to the very bottom, 
uh, they tend to get constipation. Um, a lot of people say, well, take a fiber supplement while you're taking it, but really that's not even really necessary. Um, there are some amazing stories that I've heard from one of the owners of Redmond Clay. He teaches, he frequently teaches classes and I recently went, uh, went to one of his classes and he talked about how um, some seriously ill people who were ill with celiac disease, they were super, uh, they just had, they had a very, a very aggressive case of celiac disease and they had a complete turnaround by drinking the bentonite clay. So to me this says that it does a ton for digestive issues. I have found for myself that by drinking bentonite clay, anytime I eat something that I know my body usually would have been sensitive to, like gluten or even little bits of sugar, I don't eat very much sugar, but when I do, I follow up with a glass of the clay. And if I eat bread, I follow up with a glass of the clay. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, I just love it. I feel the effects of it and I, my body craves the clay. Okay, so let me tell you about the less expensive option. Um, so a little, it was like a year ago, I wanted to start doing bentonite clay baths, but if you do a bentonite clay bath, it requires that you use one cup of the powdered clay in a bath. And the way that I do that, by the way, is I put the cup of clay in my blender and I fill it up with water and I blend that up and then I pour that into my bathtub. Otherwise you're getting clumps of clay. If you if you just put a cup of this in your bathtub, you're gonna get clumps of this stuff all over and you're gonna have a really hard time mixing it in your bath water. But it's kind of an expensive bath. I mean, one cup to a, one cup of this clay for a whole bathtub really isn't that much, but it adds up and it does use up your clay pretty quickly. Um, so what I did is I went to the agricultural store, I went to IFA, and I purchased, let me show you over here, I purchased what's called Redmond Bentonite Pond Seal. Now this is a, um, let me show you what it looks like. This is actually bentonite clay, but in a less pure form. So that's what it looks like. Um, and what I have found is that I can put it in my blender, blend it up, and it turns into a nice powder like this. You see that? Now this is not exactly like this. They're not exactly the same, and I don't think you'll be able to see this in the video. This is super smooth and just a really fine powder. This right here is slightly granular, even after I blend it up nicely. Um, so to me, that's telling me that um, this clay right here, well, let me tell you this first. So after I realized that I could blend this up, I thought, oh my goodness, this can also be turned into a paste. Let me show you this first. So I'll just turn this into a paste right now. I'm just kind of guessing on the, on the measurements here. You know, this is the gel that I was talking about, right? So you can also just take this and turn this into a gel as well. Okay. Okay, so you can see here that I've created a gel. And that right there can be applied to um, bruises or burns, so on and so forth. Um, here's my little disclaimer about it. So I was curious about how this one compared to this stuff because um, this bag right here is a 50 pound bag of this clay. And it's probably about four or five of these buckets, and it's only $8. And so I asked him, I, I contacted Redmond Clay and I said, what's the difference between these two? Are they the same thing? Is it, a, is it still a calcium bentonite clay? Um, or is it a sodium bentonite clay? What is it? How does it compare? And one of the gals said that um, it's exposed to the elements. This, is, this one, like this clay is the pure form that Redmond knows people are gonna be taking, that they will probably be taking internally. And so they keep it protected from the elements, meaning rain and wind, so on and so forth, um, and possible bird droppings. This one, they don't keep protected from the elements. And, um, and she gave me, the gal that responded to my email, gave me a different contact information so I could ask more questions. And I asked him about all of this and what that other gal had told me. And he told me that um, 
it it isn't protected from the elements but they go through it so quickly that it's hardly exposed to the elements whatsoever and that it isn't taken as from as pure of a strain that this one is taken from so where do we what's the conclusion with all this then here's what i'm thinking bentonite clay is an amazing remedy that i feel like all of us should have on hand if we do not have the budget to store um, to purchase $50 worth of a bucket, definitely consider getting the $8 bag, blending it up. And when you blend it up, by the way, either wear a mask because it gets really powdery and you don't want that getting in your lungs, or do it outside in your backyard or front yard. Um, so blend it up outside and strain it through the strainer just to get any little extra pebbles or rocks out. Um, usually with a high powered blender, you won't need a strainer at all. You just blend it up until it's just really fine. Um, but if you're feeling like you need to be storing some, definitely consider this an option. Do realize that there may be a possibility that there are some bird droppings in there, but from what um, the, the response was that I got from the Bentonite Clay employees, um, the chances of that happening aren't very likely at all. Um, because this is a little more granular than this nice smooth powder is, I believe that this doesn't have the same drawing capabilities or even healing capabilities, I'd say it's at about 80% compared to what this is at. That's just my opinion. There is no scientific studies or research behind that. Um, but it definitely will still increase the voltage of the site wherever you're needing healing to occur, and it will still have those adsorptive and absorptive properties. Um, I still think it would be a good idea to have one of these in your home um, if you're drinking it internally, because drinking this internally probably would not I don't know. You definitely can. I'll let you decide. Um, I'll let you do your research and, and just uh, figure out, I don't know, your own opinion based on what I've told you in this video. But, um, but for me personally, I keep this one for taking internally and I keep this one because I have felt like I need to store a ton of bentonite clay, but getting a ton of these right now is not in our budget. So we are planning on storing lots of this and just grinding it up and keeping it in a five gallon container. And um, it's just super amazing stuff. Make sure you've got some in your car, some of the bentonite clay gel. It works amazingly for burns, uh, stings, bites, infections, um, food poisoning, um, even things like the flu. It's, it's amazing stuff. So um, I hope all of this information was um, valuable to you. You know what, let me tell you this though, you're probably wondering, because I didn't even talk about this little bowl here. This was, these are just the little grains that were left over. I was only blending it a little bit in the blender, and then I was straining it and taking what, whatever came out of the strainer in here, and this was the leftover stuff. It almost looks like cat litter, but I found that I can blend it up some more in my blender, and that's when all of it turns into this powder right here. Um, so I will have links to a free bentonite clay book underneath this video. It's called We Eat Clay and Wear It Too. And then I will also have a link to one of my favorite bentonite clay books called Living Clay by Perry A. And there's a ton of great information in that book as well. So that's a lot of great information. I hope you've learned plenty from this video and um, definitely get some bentonite clay. It's amazing stuff and you'll be glad you'll have it on hand and you'll see how amazing it is as you begin to use it and you have that gel made right there and you can apply it to burns or wounds um, as they happen and wrap them up and, and see the miracles that can occur with something that I feel like God has blessed us with. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.